Then there's Hogarth, who satirized the lifestyle of the nouveau riche, the new rich, with comic zeal. And the new rich are going to be the industrialists, the owners of the factories, and the upper management of those factories, something that we only see coming out of the Industrial Revolution. Until this point, most English art was, going, was imported. This is a practice that Hogarth hated with an absolute zeal. He sees no reason why the English shouldn't have their own form and their own ideas. He created a truly English form of art with the deep biting satire that you see on, well, weekly news quizzes or any other BBC comedy. The piece we're looking at is Breakfast Scene, and this is one in a sequence of works. This is a favorite device for the artist. He's looking at this series, which will be called Marriage a la Mode. Breakfast Scene is just one piece of it. And the series satirized the marital immoralities of the upper class. Now here in Breakfast Scene, what you're seeing is exactly those immoralities and improprieties. The husband and wife are tired after following their nightly pursuits. We see a dog who's going to be sniffing a lacy cap. So what does that mean? That means that he's been out probably with a lady because that's a lady's nightcap. She is acting like she just got up even though she's been out following her own pursuits. Again, in an age of arranged marriages, everyone's out with someone else because they aren't married to the person that they love. They're married to the person that they have to be with. Then we see this steward and he's there with a hand full of unpaid bills looking for heavenly guidance in despair of his master's behavior. How am I going to pay these bills? How am I going to make this happen? By the way, the answer to that is frequently the master getting credit, thus building debt, and the idea was hopefully you die before the debt comes due. In the background, we get a clear signal of what's going on. So the draped work that you see pointed to here is actually an erotic painting next to uncovered paintings of the saints. Now, this would have been really common. You would have had erotic artwork in the home, maybe one or two pieces, and you would put a curtain in front of it for propriety's sake. And then when you want to see it, you would pull a string, which opens it up and everyone gasps and looks at it and goes, wow, that's, you know, whatever. Usually it's going to be some form of reclining nude, an issue we'll get to later on. So overall, what we have is signs of something that isn't really what it would seem. At first look, what we should see is a happy couple, the butler who's taking care of everything, a well-appointed home. But as we dig deeper, we see that there's more to it. And that's Hogarth's biting satire. The idea that I can hide things within this painting that if you know how to look at it, you're going to see including things like the open violin, the papers on the floor, the general mess. And we've all been there. We've all walked into that home where someone goes, oh, sorry for the mess. I need to take care of this. And in some cases, you believe them. In some cases, the house is clean and you go, what mess? And in some cases, you know that that mess isn't just from the last week. That mess has been there forever. They're just trying to cover it up and make it look nice. And it's getting past those niceties. It's going to be key to understanding Hogarth and his typically English satire.